One of my earliest jazz memories is when my high school band leader referred to There Is No Greater Love as the kitchen song, because there is no greater love. I've tried passing this on, but no one seems to appreciate a good jazz pun anymore. Wordplay aside, No Greater Love is a pretty inoffensive jazz standard, maybe with the exception of all those dominant seventh chords. The song was written by Isham Jones, who was one of the leading band leaders in the early 20th century, scoring seven number one hits during his career. Now, Jones's band was definitely a pop group and not a jazz orchestra in any way. Although, I'd point out that Duke Ellington didn't consider himself a exclusively jazz band leader either. And Louis Armstrong, for one, loved the schlocky pop music of band leaders like Guy Lombardo. So there's really a lot of overlap between the, the pop bands of the time and jazz history. Jones recorded the song in 1936 with Woody Herman as vocalist, and the Ellington Orchestra uh, did a version in the same year. But it wasn't for another couple of decades that it became a standard part of the jazz repertoire. So how did that change? Well, you can hear this a lot, but Miles Davis had a lot to do with it. Miles recorded it in the studio in 1955, and then again 10 years later on the acclaimed live album Four and More. Younger audiences might be a little more familiar with Amy Winehouse's version of the song off her debut album, Frank. It's a solid performance of an extremely dope album, so you should definitely listen to it if you haven't. The song itself is a great vehicle for improvisers of all stripes. When it's not played as a ballad, it's normally a pretty easy swing tempo, and a lot of the chords last for an entire bar. That's great for beginner improvisers. But right out of the gates, the A section of the song features a kind of unusual sequence of dominant seventh chords. So there's a little something something for advanced players as well. It starts on the one, Give me that one. and then moves to the four dominant, then the flat seven dominant. Here it subscribes to the channel before dropping to a six dominant, then cycling to a two dominant, which pivots to a bog standard two five one to return home. But that's enough music theory. Let's hear some music. The original version is a little dated by today's standard, but here it is, Isham Jones with his band, along with Woody Herman, the vocalist. There is no greater love than what I feel for you. No greater love, the heart so true. There is no greater thrill and what you bring to me. Billie Holiday recorded the song a couple of times. Here's a live version from a concert at Carnegie Hall in the late 40s. No love. Than what I feel for you. No Okay, so let's hear the Miles Davis recordings now. The cool thing about these is they show how the tune has developed over the course of 20 years, initially as a ballad and then into a, more of a medium tempo swing tune. First, the studio recording from 1955. And now the recording from 1964 from the Four and More concert. If you listen to the full 1964 recording, listen for how the band drops in and drops out and, and varies the energy throughout the entire performance. It's a great example of, of that ebb and flow. One of my favorite recordings of There Is No Greater Love is from 1961 by Sonny Stitt and Gene Amons uh, from the Boss Tenors album. Although on this particular recording, Sonny Stitt actually plays alto sax. Thank you. 
Here's Vincent Herring's recording of the song from his 2001 album Simple Pleasures. It's still definitely in the hard bop tradition, but it's a more modern take on the song. You can find this live version by Joel Fram from 2017 on YouTube featuring Ari Honig on drums. There's a very fun Indiana Jones quote at around the two minute mark. That's enough for the moment. Uh, there is no greater way to love jazz than to listen to it directly. So I've left a playlist of these songs in the description. Speaking of playlist, this is a playlist of all of the other videos that I've made about jazz standards, if you'd like to check them out. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I make videos like this fairly often, so hopefully I'll see you next time.